Welcome to another Christmas edition of 100 Huntley Street. And uh, you might hear some harp music in behind there. <laughs> that is the music of Edward Clausen. There he is. <laughs> Nothing like harp music at Christmas time. It's uh, the music of angels, isn't it? <laughs> and Edward is playing the Paraguayan harp, very oh. special instrument. It has some modifications from the classical harp. He's from Paraguay. Uh, but we're also going to hear his story, Ron. And if you were to script a Hollywood story, I don't think you could script it the way his real life story mm -hmm. reads. Uh, this is also one of his CDs. He has a number of CDs. This is Christmas Melodies. And we're okay. going to hear some more music from Christmas Melodies today. And we're going to hear the whole amazing story. It is it's a, absolutely an amazing. Story. You'll want to stay tuned for that. You'll be on the sure. edge of your seat. And lots of that great angelic music yes. of the harp. Yeah. Uh, it's different from what a guy said once. He said, uh, my w wife's an angel because she's always up in the air and harping on something. But, oh, there you but go. But no, that, that's, a, that's different. That's uh, on the negative side. But no, this is very positive. I don't think my husband would ever say that. No, no. At least no. not to my face. <laughs> in 1980, I had the privilege to go to the city to study music. In 1986, I came to Canada, 26 years old, single, looking for a new future. I lived in Winnipeg for six years. I traveled with my music. I started in 1986 full time. I was the biggest hypocrite you could have found in a church. I was a liar. I was a dishonest Christian. My heart was full of sin. I had, I had tried it by myself for years to straighten it out. I couldn't do it. And finally, one day in 1990, November 27, at 12.30, my heart was touched by the Holy Spirit. I, I had nowhere to turn. I kneeled down beside my bed. I said, Lord, I cannot carry this load of sin anymore. Well, one of the things is you're struggling with smoking cigarettes. I was smoking cigarettes for 20 years. And what made it so dangerous for you is not just the fact that it's, it's a bad habit and it's bad for your health, but also you were lying to everybody about it. Exactly. I was just plain dishonest. You see, the, the sin started right there and then built up. The mountain was so big soon, I, I just didn't know where to turn. I dreamt sometimes I died and I landed in hell. And the people found my cigarettes, that I had been lying. Actually, they thought it was a good person. But there I had my sin hidden. And that, I think, was the bad part and this, and the bad conscience I had about it. In and uh, 1990, that day in, in the city of Winnipeg, when I kneeled down beside my bed, I put my cigarette package right there. I wrote down 1990, November 27, at 1230. I said, this is it. I have tried it for thousands of times to commit my life to the Lord. I have tried it myself for so many years to be a good Christian. I cannot do it. So finally, I did the right thing. I gave my life to the Lord. I opened the Bible up at John 3, 16 till 21. I read it over and over and over. I started to cry. I started to beg. I was by myself. There were no pastors around, no friends. That day, after two hours of crying and begging and confessing my sins, Jesus came into my heart. That day, he made me a child of his. He changed me, just like that. When I got up from that prayer that day, I lost many of my friends because they did the same thing. From then on, God has blessed the ministry. God has opened doors I had never ever dreamt would be open for me. Never mind to travel around the world, sharing in front of thousands of people how awesome our God is. Well, you have had the opportunity to travel all over the globe with your music and sharing your personal story of what God has done in your life. But you also had an opportunity to meet somebody very special. I'll let you tell the rest of the story because you mentioned that yes. you will never forget <laughs> J.D. Friesen. Yes. Uh, a year and a half ago or so, we traveled with Transworld Radio out west. And I have been many times west. In the city of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, in the middle of the concert, I saw a gentleman sitting there with tears in his eyes. I gave my testimony, the same concert I usually do. This old gentleman came up on stage, and guess what he said to me? He said to me, Edward, my name is J.D. Friesen. I am so impressed what I have heard tonight. I said, why do you say that? Well, he said, I am one of the missionaries who came in the late 70s and early 80s to your mud house in a Paraguayan bush, and we had evangelistic evenings. He said, Brother Clausen, I had never dreamt in my life that I would see a result like this here in my home city, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Because he didn't really know. I, I mean, they held a number of meetings, and, but you never know if, if the word is going to be received or the difference that you've made. Right. 
after you pack up and go back to Canada. Exactly. Wow, it's amazing how that story came around full circle. Edward, why do you suppose that you struggled for so long? Because you had head knowledge and you wanted to follow Jesus. Why do you suppose it was such a lifelong struggle for you until that day uh, when you got down on your knees and said, I'm not getting up until God, until you do something. That's I am right. not going to get up off of my knees until you do something. But why do you suppose you had so many struggles in between? You know, I think my brought up years were like that too. My dad struggled with the same thing. Okay. And uh, he straightened his life out. He committed his life to the Lord. And uh, he was doing the same thing with the smoking. He did it hidden for many years. Mm -hmm. And one day he straightened out. And then I thought, wait a minute, if he can do it. And many of my friends did it, the same as I. And many of my friends who loved what I was doing, they warned me many times. They said, Edward, you cannot go on like this. You will get never a blessing. If you are not 100% for the Lord, 99% will not do it. Right. So it really, it really hurt my heart. For so many years, I wanted to do a good job. I wanted to work for the Lord, and I wanted to be a blessing, that I will have treasure in heaven for it, not just for my own sake. So I could do something else. I don't have to talk about Jesus on stage. But one day, that, that day in 1990, I just, I just broke in pieces. I said, God, this is it. People have warned me, and I know if I will not straighten out my life, I might never see heaven, heaven. And that was very scary for me. I wanted to serve the Lord from the bottom of my heart, and I wanted to do it honest. When you look at the way that your life has unfolded, can you hardly believe what has happened? Growing up in such an isolated environment uh, where music really was a new thing. You, you know, right. how old were you when you heard music for the first time? I was seven. Seven years old. That's right. And yet you've become such an accomplished musician, and now you travel all over the world. I tell you, our God is an awesome God. I can never thank Him enough that God gave me a chance, that I can travel and share my story in a simple way. God has done amazing things, that I can live in this beautiful country, Canada. That is amazing already. Never mind having over 200 concerts a year, traveling all over the world and seeing beautiful things. I do not deserve it. Our God has given me a wonderful privilege, and if I will not give Him the honor and glory for it, then He will give this ministry to somebody else. And I want to give God and I want to praise Him from the bottom of my heart for every minute I have on stage. Well, I can't thank you enough for being with us today, sharing your story. Uh, we're going to go over to Norm at our prayer lines, and I want you to understand something. I want to put a punctuation point, uh, an exclamation point on something that Edward said. God wants 100% of you. Now, you don't have to clean yourself up to come to God, but He wants you 100% heart, body, soul, and mind. Let's go over to Norm now. So, uh, so true, Rhonda. You know, I was thinking as I was listening to Edward that sometimes it doesn't take very much to keep us from having true victory in the Lord. Something as small and as a cigarette can, can kind of put a wall up there between you and the Lord because people know it's harmful, they know it's, it's something that's not right to do, and it's, but yet it seems so insignificant at times. It doesn't take much for one to miss out on all the benefits that God has for you by a simple, unconfessed, or undealt with sin in one's life. I don't know what you may be facing, but whatever it is, would you give Jesus opportunity to come into your life